right, well, here we are starting another fun run. We're going to be heading up to Miami again from Big Pine Key, and this is how it starts. This is always the most exciting time. Yeah, I'm excited too, honey, but logistically, we're going to be gone for a couple days, and I'm not sure you know exactly what it takes to get all packed up and out of the house. Honey, what are you talking about? You just put one foot in front of the other and make sure your wife has your bags packed. We've got some incredible footage, and one of the things we're going to focus on is answering some questions. Since our last videos, we've had a ton of questions, and now this video is when you're going to get all the answers. So the other day, somebody wrote online, what does this guy do? Is he a drug dealer? How does he afford this? I'm just an inventor. I've made a business that allowed my wife and I to build a life that's unique and adventurous, but we still work full time. My wife and I just adjust our vacation times to coincide with these fun runs. And we like to share these runs because for me, coming from a really modest background, I like to show that with a lot of dedication that the American dream is still alive. And it's alive for anybody. And to tell you the truth, the people we meet on these fun runs are in the same exact boat. They've built a business, they've worked really hard, they've saved their money, and now they're enjoying this time of their life. And each one of them have their own great American story. And if you're listening closely, extra points if you caught the fun, or the boat, or both, I guess. All right, I digress. Honey, I'm way off track. Where are we? It's the next morning, we're at Holliver Marine, listening to Stu at the captain's meeting talk about safety. Get in one way and roll the boat. Just to roll the boat a little bit, it'll roll you right off the seat onto the floor. It'll catch a standing person right into the water. So after the safety meeting's done, everybody pretty much just goes back to their own boat and they get their boat ready for the actual fun run itself. There's not a lot of time here, so you can feel rushed, but how we take care of that is we divide and conquer. My responsibility is the mechanics of the boat and the audiovisual equipment. It's also time to put on suntan lotion to make sure you don't get burnt and to go over the last minute safety checks. And for my crew, it's taking care of the dock lines and making sure the boat is fit for full high-speed operation. All right, let's, uh, let's unwrap. Coming up, we have some amazing high-speed footage for this fun run. But before we get into that, I do want to take this time and answer some of these questions that we've had right, over the last few months since we've been doing these fun run videos. The first question I want to answer has to do with safety and alcohol. Somebody asked, what is that blue wristband that you have? And that is a band, a wristband that every captain wears. You get it in your captain's pack. And all that does is tell everybody around you, including bartenders at all the stops that you make in this poker run, that you're the driver and you're not supposed to be served alcohol. And it's a great way to just make sure that these boats are dry. These are extremely fast, high performance boats. And this is a rule that our boat takes really seriously. All right, here comes the most nerve wracking part for my wife, and that's getting the first poker card, which she's gonna get up there and grab that card, and we don't have an issue. We've never had an issue, but it's, it is always a little bit tense. Stressful, nerve wracking, I think that's the understatement of the millennium. You have no idea, honey, what it is like to get up on the bow of the boat. It is so slippery in an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini, and try to grab a poker card from the FPC girls, make sure your boat doesn't hit the dock, make sure you don't fall into the water or do something else really embarrassing. So my suggestion is next time, I'm gonna drive the boat and you're gonna grab the card. Okay, I don't make films, but if I did, they have the samurai. They're going to start lighting it up any second. Where's the lead boat? Where's the... Okay, There's yep, no lead boat. We're waiting for the no wake up here. All right, with the hull over no wake zone ending, it's time for the fun run to start. We get up on plane and you can see us trying to scoot around some of the louder inboards. Now, nothing against inboards, we do love them, but some of them, you know, whether it's cat or V hull, they can be pretty loud from behind. So, for us in the outboards that are pretty quiet, we do like to scoot around them and stay out in front where it's a lot more comfortable on our ears. So, what I appreciate the most is if you every once in a while 
check to either side and let us know if something's coming up. You'll see me doing it. Only the faster boats will be passing us, and there will be boats like that. They hit that other cruiser wake no, pretty no. hard. So fun runs are not races. These are just meant to be fun, get your boat on the water, and kind of get up to speed and see how it does against maybe other boats, other manufacturers, and other captains. So they're not races, but it doesn't mean it doesn't get a little bit competitive. This thing's a fucking hole shot master. <laughs> well, that's kind of painful to watch, me bragging about my boat like that coming up out of the hole, but this is what happens when you're out there doing a fun run. You just say stuff like that. I'm gonna keep it in here to keep it real. But it is a good illustration of how far outboards have come with technology and performance. Now, I don't know if this guy beside me was getting on it. It sounds like he was, but in general, inboards, inboard cats are supposed to be far quicker accelerating and higher end speeds than the outboards. But these days, that's starting to change. The technology has, has come so far these outboards are really, really catching up quickly, pun intended. Now I had this boat specially made for me. It's an IMC Carbon, it's super lightweight, but I also did a ton of work to even lighten it more. So it is the lightest 390 out there. And this video is a good illustration of what that can do for you. It's really quick, especially for an outboard. Well, I don't want to get into all the ways I lightened my boat, but here's one good illustration. If you look to the right of the screen, you'll see my steering wheel. That is a super lightweight dragster steering wheel. I had the manufacturer replace the stock steering wheel and it went from 14 pounds all the way down. I think that steering wheel actually weighs like two pounds. There you go, that's 12 pounds you saved in your boat just with a steering wheel. Yeah, it's not as fancy, but all that weight ends up adding up. Uh, is that broken? Looks to me like we have a broken drawbridge. Well, maybe they're cleaning, oh, they're just cleaning it. Don't dump rocks on me, guy. glad that we captured that on film. Um, it was just a conscious effort to slow down in this area where there's a lot of traffic and it narrowed and there's going to be some wakes. And sure enough, 10 seconds later, maybe 20 seconds later, it paid off. We hit these big wakes, but we didn't have any issues because we had slowed down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now these are full airborne moments. The boat's not, you know, getting launched at 80 miles an hour, but we're coming out of the air and we're hitting those waves pretty hard. If you look behind you, you're going to see the other boats behind us probably getting launched. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right, we're going to bust, we're going to bust the gap. We're going to bust the gap. Okay, so there's always a struggle with what do you put in here? Do you put in footage that makes you look like a total dork? But at the end of the day, we want to keep it real. So we're going to keep the footage in here at the expense of our dignity. All right, the next part of the video happens to be one of my favorites. It's really pretty stressful, but it's also super fun. We're going by the container ships. We're not going super fast, but there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of boats, jet skis, a lot of wakes in the water. And you'll see my wife and our passenger LB calling things out, making audibles, making sure that the captain's aware and we're being safe and grabbing a good line. You'll also see that we're being passed on the starboard side, which makes things a little bit more exciting. And I'm just gonna let it roll. I'm gonna let it play out. I'm gonna stop narration and we'll just watch it real time. Container ships. Jet skiers, two jet skiers. Pretty in the face. Have a little boat. Got an active tugboat. Three active tugboats on this barge. I got a real We'll give them a little bit of room. We'll slow down a little bit. This ain't going on stuff. All these holes, pussy baby. I do not do friends well. Active tug. Got him. I got that one too. He's crossing my bow. Come on, guys. Pick a direction. Fuck. We got Robbie over here. We're splitting that jet here. I know. So, watch Robbie. He's cutting across. 
Okay. I'm gonna cut this buoy right here. Oh, Jesus. I'm gonna cut this marker. Fuck it. Go ahead. You're good. All right, now that we're out of Miami, the most dense part, you'll see this is the first time in the video that I actually lay the hammer down. You'll see the throttles go down and you'll see the my rooster tail actually lay down. And that means we're moving. And uh, we're moving because beside me is my good friend, Rob, who has a beautiful Mystic with a set of inboard 1100s and that thing hauls ass. Um, fortunately for me, so does my boat. And we always like to play cat and mouse and we do for the next, I think probably three or four miles until we get to the next stop. That's a Bellini. Oh, okay. It's Mike's boat with a 450. You'll notice I look over my right shoulder on my starboard side to clear that way, that avenue, before I actually take this corner a little tight coming out from under the bridge. We can't be found You know, sometimes it's just not worth trying to thread the needle. And this is one of those cases coming up here. There's a bunch of boat traffic that you can't see that's out in front of us. And I just decided to just pull the throttles back. I'll let Rob pass to the port side. I'll pull him behind him and we'll just get through this safely. That happens a ton of times. You just have to make that decision. Do you thread the needle or do you just kind of lay back and, and be a little bit more safe? It all depends on traffic. It depends on, on wakes and waves and the environment that you're going through. Yep. We get a comment the other day about me not looking like I'm having very much fun. And I just want to set the record straight that when you're doing triple digits in a boat, you may put your serious face on, but you're still having an absolute blast. You know, in this video, you'll see me a couple of times throw up my left hand with a fist, and all that means to the boats behind me is I'm slowing down or I may be coming to a stop, not caution and they may not be able to see what's in front of me, so it's just a signal to them, hey, this is what I'm doing. And right here, I'm just coming into the no wake zone to pick up the first part. It's interesting, isn't it, how men and women say hi differently to their best friends. So here we are at the first car pickup. We're doing a complete 360, or sorry, yeah, pretty much a 360 clockwise. We're um, second boat here. It's a good run. Um, we ran next to Robbie. He's got a Mystic uh, 4400 fast boat inboard. Um, he ran awesome, and we just had a great time running up. So now we're going to get the first cart. LB's going to get it. I'm going to get up there soon. Yep. push us off, so all you gotta do is worry about the card. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Robbie's gonna totally jump this whole shot, but nice bum bum, honey. Nice. Nice bum, where are you it's from? Safe. Yeah. Me. Me. Sam, damn right. Do you do squats? Damn right. Definitely got a stiff wind here. Two, I two see them broken down. I see them. Oh, you think they're broken? They might be waiting for us. Wake boat up in front of us. Air sailboat with the sailboat. Yep. They're moving pretty slow. So uh, that's a parasail, yep. Yeah. Zoom me out. Need a good line here. One or two. How am I doing behind? So what I do there is I pull the throttles back and that lowers the rooster tail and allows Sarah to see what's behind us. 
Now this is really, really important. And you'll see in the next couple of minutes how important this can be. Just because you have a fast boat doesn't mean you have the fastest boat in this fun run. It doesn't mean you're not going to get overtaken. Some of these channels on the intercoastal can be really narrow. And you may have to make an adjustment, starboard or port, to fit in that channel and make it safe. You need to know if there's somebody coming up behind you and how fast they're going. All right, way back. Should yeah. I slow down? That's you. I don't want to push it that hard. 105, I think, is good in this. 105 and like a two foot chop, I think, is pretty good. Kind of diagonal, too. It's not exactly straight on. First push How are the seats doing today? Well, we do very well till we're over 100. They're probably all doing like 90 something. Super, I'll slow it down to 100. You got his weight. I don't know. Can I see it? it? Yeah. I feel like we should wait for them so we can get them to play with the team. Yeah, so wait for them. You want to wait it's, for them? Yeah, it's kind of more fun to run beside somebody. That's up to you. Buddy. You know, I love this part. I, I'm going to keep this in here because it, it really shows, you know, the, the audibles that you have to call real time in the boat. Um, and you just work together and you figure out, do you want to go fast? Do you want to go slow? What are the pros and cons to either? Um, and this is how it works out. Which doesn't matter. That's a good little bump run. It's actually perfect conditions for this boat. It's actually very smooth. If you blow it up a little bit more. Well, I mean, it's a little choppy, but it's, it's the part. We're not doing this. Well, I've been waiting for a good time to bring up our passenger, LB. She's a good friend of ours, but it is her first time. So you'll notice through this film that she's definitely holding on for dear life. And I will guarantee you that is everybody's first ride. It takes a little bit to get used to these boats, but it's just like any fun run. Whether you're on a dirt bike or a four-wheeler or a sports car, it takes a little bit of getting used to and getting comfortable with the vehicle and knowing what is actual what you're actually capable of doing and at what speeds. But honey, by the end of the fun run, she was having a blast. I know, but the biggest question is going to be, does she come back on our boat anytime soon? Oh, absolutely. I give 50-50. It's a slower boat this time. This cruise is going to throw one. Yeah, a big one. Because he's plowing. Look at him plow. He's plowing. We don't want to trip and stuff him. So a trip and stuff is a nautical term speed boaters use, and all it means is that You've got some air, your boat got some air, your bow's a little too high, and it comes back down, your stern, the back part of your boat, hits first, and it hits with enough force, it slams your bow down, your bow gets buried into the water, and then everybody goes flying over the bow at about 120 miles an hour. Probably doing, there we go. That's his wake right there, I mean, he's moving. 90 maybe, and maybe 80. And it can be really ugly. It's something you want to avoid at all costs, and you avoid it by basically controlling your trim and making sure that your boat doesn't get too much air. Keep triangles on your starboard. Triangle starboard, check. Get your green and red when somebody's colorblind. I'm going to stay inside his wake. I don't want to get no, I don't want to get rolled up in, into that marker. You got another big cruiser way. Yeah. Not sure. Nothing behind you, honey. You're good. This is a good example of why you should know what's behind you. This is a super fast MTI 1550 boat, and it is hauling ass. It makes me look like I'm sitting still. I'm probably doing 105. This guy's doing probably 130 or 40. He gives me plenty of room. He's a great driver, but it doesn't mean you don't want to know he's there. If you have to make a sudden movement, uh, port or starboard to try to fit into a channel, you want to know so you know you can adjust your lane and hug it to one side if necessary. I want to do a shout out to a great group of people on the port side of us right here in a 368 skater. The boat is War Party and it's Brittany, Bubba, Nikki, Chuck and Troy. These guys are a blast to hang out with. It was our first time meeting them and we can't wait to hang out with them again on the next fun run.
Sometimes these waves and wakes, they pop up out of nowhere. There's no boats around. You wonder where they come from. It's like a big game of where's Waldo. Hold on. Where the fuck did that come from? Some cruiser that went to the channel. Where the fuck did that come from? A couple of good ones in there. We hit them diagonal too. Or in this case, where's wake dough? Wave dough. Hmm. Not sure if that works. Uh, nice, somebody put a lobster trap right at the fucking goddamn inlet of that. I saw something in your tail, but it was far back. Well, there is somebody not too far back. I saw a cat back there. Either side, you're fine on either yep. one of these. We're gonna, we're gonna shoot this. What? Green squares on your port side. See that small boat yep. by the marker? Nice girls, first track done. Second end, we only do an inboard. I'm not too upset about that. Only lost one cushion. Only lost one cushion, that's a win. All right, that's the end of the first leg in part one of this 2021 FPC Miami to Key West fun run. And hopefully we were able to answer some of the questions out there from the last few videos. Stay tuned for the second part. The second part's a ton of fun. It's where we get to Key West and we hit some craziness going down there. Uh, we're in twos to threes and we're hauling ass about 150 miles an hour, the fastest I've ever been in this boat in those seas. And you get a chance to see that in the next part coming up. So stay tuned.